Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. Uh, I got a great show for you guys today. I got a great guest. Uh, and I know she's a great guest because she spent some time with us a couple weeks ago on our happy hour, our Friday night happy hour, um, which if I do speed this up and, and kick this out today, that will be tonight. We actually have Ramon Bermo on tonight. Uh, typically, I'm a little bit slower on that, though, and it probably won't be out in time. Um so I don't think that that's not really a good promo then if I actually do it, if it comes out after the event, it doesn't really work that well. Uh, but anyway, you can find this in the back episodes of our podcast on our website. It's called OrdinaryMarathoner.com. Check that out if you get a chance. You can also find them on the, uh, the aggregators, places like Stitcher and TuneIn, iTunes, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all that good stuff. Uh, any of those uh, podcast aggregator sites, you can find find the podcast. podcast. You can also find them at YouTube. We've been putting up the videos on YouTube. Um, check that out. Hit that subscribe button too if you get a chance. You could always use the uh, sub- subscribers and the support over there as well. So anyway, like I said, our guest today uh, was a former guest on our happy hour. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let her sort of introduce herself and give her uh, give us a little bit of background on on herself. Uh, Stephanie Luares, welcome back. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. And I am Stephanie Luares. I am the owner of Heart and Soul Fitness and Wellness. And I am a body positive personal trainer and fitness nutrition specialist. And I see clients both in person and virtually doing personal training, fitness, nutrition, counseling, meal planning, uh, accountability coaching, and even cooking demonstrations. And what that is, is it's really a holistic approach, one-on-one with clients, breaking down the barriers to fitness and nutrition to meet people's individual goals where they're at because we all have life, kids, work, schedules, everything that um, gets in the way of where we wanna be. And so I come in to kind of just break down whatever it is that stands in the way. Usually it's ourselves in our excuses of getting to where people want to be and what they want to achieve in life. And I came to that basically based on my own journey and um, just showing people that anything really is possible. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, one of the things that I loved about you on the, when we did the happy hour. And I think really the reason uh, why I was like, immediately, I was like, I got to have her on the podcast as well. It's just, there's such a great story behind how you got started um, and how you, you know, you develop, you just kind of developed yourself and then you decided to sort of branch out and, and sort of take everything that you've learned over the course of your, uh, the pathway that you've taken and then sort of impart it on other people and help with other people. So why don't we start there? Um, you know, I know that this, uh, was a, a bit of a weight loss journey for you too in the beginning. How, how did this all get started? Uh, was there a moment where you, where the, the, you know, there was like a light switch moment where you said, Hey, I got to get some things in order. And, and, uh, how did this get going for you? There was, uh, this was, some, this is not something that I have done my entire life. Um, I, I worked a, a corporate job for almost 20 years. I was an administrator and, um, you know, there, there was one day that I just was sitting in my office and, and just kind of had that light bulb moment where I'm tired of being sick and tired. Um, and I'm a person that ha- has been overweight my entire life. Um, I have that distinct memory in my mind of being five years old in the pediatrician's office and being put on my first diet. And, you know, I have been on every diet on the planet. I can prove to you, you can lose weight. I can prove to you, you can gain weight too. Um, I've lost hundreds of pounds in my life and I've gained them all back. Um, Traditional dieting just doesn't work. Science backs that up 100%. Um, And so I knew for me, the answer was not just a traditional diet. It, I I couldn't put myself through that disappointment again of 
going to the extreme of restriction and just that that emotional toll of I, I have to stick to the plan and this is how it works and and throwing my husband through the upheaval of you know the the crazy wife when she's on a diet I, I couldn't do it again but I knew some habits had to change and so I, I'm a really type A person. I, I thrive well with routine and goals and things like that. So it started with just tiny things like let's get more hydration, a little more movement. So it would be setting a timer and having just a small cup on my desk. The water cooler was at the other end of the office. So throughout the day, it would be, okay, get up and go get, you know, fill the cup how many times a day to just get more hydration and more movement through the day. And, you know, starting to look at the, the foods I was eating and starting to just eat a little bit better, incorporate more vegetables in my meals and, you know, less processed foods and things like that. And, you know, my, at the start, my husband, you know, I wasn't going to put him through the torture too, but so I was cooking two different meals at the start. Right. Um, but as he started seeing how I was eating and the changes that I was going through, he would start to say, oh, well, next time, maybe make that for me. <laughs> so it was the example, too. And that's great for you. I mean, then you only have right. to do one. I mean, that's great. Yeah. But then, you know, as I started to feel better through the, the little changes I was making, then I was ready for some movement. Because at this point, I was not mobile. I, I've lost over 200 pounds. So at this point, I wasn't very mobile. And so it was, okay, what can I do? Well, let's try walking. Well, walk to the end of the street and back. I wanted to die. Okay, well, here's a starting point. Walk to the end of the street and back. Walk to the end of the street and back. I can do that now. Then it's around the block, around the neighborhood, increasing the distance, increasing the speed, and then, you know, as, as I'm starting to get fitter walking, you know, really getting some distance and some speed down, the one day I get it in my head that I wonder if I can run, you know, I'm the kid that I fake sick in gym class. Yeah. So, the, you know, this idea in my head is completely foreign. You know, there, there's a stop sign like 100 yards down the street. And I'm like, OK, let, let's just try that. Now, just running to that stop sign, I wanted to die, but something in my head clicked and I'm like, this is on, like something lit up inside of me. And I'm like, I got to figure this out because I like this. And so from there, it was okay, you know. Let, let's figure out this whole running thing, you know, how do fat girls run and all this other stuff. And so I get into the Galloway method and, you know, go down all these rabbit holes. And so I run my first 5Ks and 10Ks. And then I'm like, okay, half marathon, we're going to do this. And, you know, I'm, I'm all about, you know, traveling and seeing things. We don't have a lot of local races where I live. I live in a small, smaller rural area. So I'm all about the racecation. So, you know, I, I live in uh, Northwestern Arizona. My first half marathon was, you know, North Washington, practically in Canada. Wow. And so <laughs> what made you choose that one? How'd you, yeah. How'd you get that one? So, you know, it, you know, there are amazing websites to search out races. <laughs> there are. But, you know, for me at that point, it was, okay, what races have the longest cutoff times? Yeah, true. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a really great point. I mean, a lot of them, you know, we, we've had, had some people on the podcast before that are, you know, uh, Martinez Evans comes to mind where, you know, the race directors aren't sympathetic sort of to the back of the Packers and... Right. 
you know, and you want to make sure that there's, you know, that you want to, you want someone to give you your medal when you cross the finish line, right? right? You want to, you know, and I've actually been to races where they're, you know, people crossing at the end of the day and there's a box with medals in it and they literally have to go over to the box and get there. And I think it's a travesty. Um, so I, I think it's awesome that you found the one that was right for you. Yep. And, you know, I, I can't remember like the, even that first race, I, I, I'm, I might have been the last or pretty darn close to the last, but I, I didn't, I didn't come in at the cutoff, but I mean, there were still people at the finish and I cry at every finish line, no matter (laughs) what the distance, no matter what the race, this has been years now. I still cry every single finish line. Like I don't have a pretty finish line photo ever, ever. I mean, you know what though, where, where you came from, you know, and go walk into the end of the block and back, uh, you know, the, you'd never probably, at, at, there are probably points in your life where you never, ever thought you'd be capable of running a 5k. Yeah. And so that's why I think, you know, when you see a finish line, it's like, even if it's a 5k and, and I don't even want to make it sound like I'm putting down, I'm just saying that you've done, obviously done half marathons. And I know from our conversations, you have bigger and better goals. Yeah. A, there was a time where you, you didn't know that you would ever be able to do a 5k. So the tears are, are worthy. Yeah. And I mean, it was, it was actually during that first 5k that I got it in my head that I was going to do that half marathon. I didn't quite know when, but it's like, and it's always like, there's something bigger because, you know, I've, I've, I've done, you know, the half marathons, I've done a few full marathons, you know, I've jumped over into triathlon. I'm, you know, I'm doing the, the, the 70.3s. Hopefully, we'll I know. We'll I was just going to ask you that. Arizona. I'm tired of these race cancellations with, <laughs> with everything this year. This but. past week alone has been really vicious. Uh, we've lost a <sighs> bunch of races, Lake Placid, the full and the half. We lost New York City Marathon, uh, at Lubbock, Ironman Lubbock. I think it was a 70.3 that went, and that one was supposed to, like, people were on their way to the race and, yes. uh, and they canceled. So it's one of those things now. It's just. I mean, maybe they just scrapped 2020. I mean, I think Marine Corps Marathon is holding on. They've made some adjustments and and thinned the field a little bit. Uh, and I, you know, I'm doing Philly Marathon, which is late November. So, but still, if they canceled New York, you think they're probably going to cancel Philly? I don't know. Um, just a sad I, year. I wish they would just make the blanket decision so we could all manage our disappointment because it was difficult for me. When Oceanside canceled, I'm supposed to be yeah. in Coeur d'Alene this weekend. Mm. I'm struggling again. You know, what's going to happen with yeah. Super Frog? What's going to happen with <laughs> Iron Man Arizona? You know, I I can only take so much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's funny because my last podcast, we talked about this uh, distinctly is just the good part about all this thing is that when it comes to the running community, I mean, we deal with adversity on a daily basis. It may be in here. It may not be with a race specific thing. We may, but we're training for a race and we're forcing ourselves or we're, we're, you know, executing that discipline it takes to get out and train all the time. And we're tough minded people to begin with. It takes toughness to be in this sport. And I think in that respect, at least um, with all this disappointment that's thrown at you, at least you start from a place of mental strength where you're, you know, you're in a good, you're in a good spot. It takes, it takes mental strength to just attack these races and train for these races and be involved. So I think that in that respect, I, I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Absolutely. And I, and I think I'm in a very different place now. Like if this had happened last year at this time, I probably would not have handled it as gracefully <laughs> as I am in this space, you know, because Right now, you know, I, I'm able to pick up and continue because not only, you know, am, am I continuing to train with the hope of 2021 and deferred races and things like that, I'm having to maintain my fitness and, and continue working out with, you know, my, my clients and, you know, keep with them you know, with them in mind, I can't just drop everything and say, well, what, what's the point? Right. Right. 
you know, had, had I been in a different mindset in a different space, I could have said, well, Hey, what's the point? I, I don't have anything on the calendar. Yeah. And it- Cause I, 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 I am that, that very goal driven person with that end point in mind. Yeah. You know, it, it is, it's always nice to have that, that, release at the end that goal at that big thing that you're shooting for and i'm the same way like it takes me uh i do i train harder i train better i'm more consistent when i have that that goal in the end though when you look at it it's not you know we're doing this the goal is the nice thing to have but it's the it's the path that takes you along the way it's the fitness that you build up that's really that's really the stuff that makes you feeling that makes you feel better um, you know, when you cross that finish, the reason re- the reason why you shed tears when you cross that finish line, it's not because you did a 5k that day or you did a half marathon that day. It's because of all the work that you put in starting way back when, uh, that got you to that point. I think it is because it's look what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not over, not just this last minute. It's the, over the course of time. It's, and it that's is. sort of the person that you become, you kind of, you know, you become a runner. You don't just wake up and it's like, you just, you go through that period of time where it takes you, uh, you know, a few weeks and months to, of discipline. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, uh, how did, you know, to your point before when you're like, I'm going to start running. And all of a sudden there must've been a point where you're like, my God, I'm a runner. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, you know, yeah. you mentioned, you mentioned a lot of things, uh, in your, and I took a couple notes, but, um, you know, the little changes that you mentioned in your routine, uh, the, the cup of water, for example, um, I think, you know, one of the things that always got to me when it came to diets and all that stuff, um, I know I'm taking a big step back here, um, was sometimes it's just, you know, you don't realize you think you're eating well, you think you're eating good. And, you know, I remember just, I would go and eat breakfast and I would wake up in the morning, go to work, get a bagel and cream cheese, be like, all right, breakfast is done. Uh, and then when I changed my habit, it was, I'd, I'd wake up a little bit before work. I would do, you know, 45 minutes on the bike. I'd, sh- I'd, I'd burn 400 calories. I'd go have an, an omelet, uh, and then go to work. And I, you know, instead of being plus 700 calories of a bagel and cream cheese, I would be minus a hundred from the, that workout offsetting the omelet. And it's amazing when you kind of do the math and then to, to, you know, to do the things like you said that, I mean, that's like a, it's a little, it's a little change when you think about it. It's just waking up early and getting the workout. You, you swam this morning mm-hmm. at what, like 4 a.m. But at that's, you know, you make the conscious choice and then you have the discipline to go through with it. Uh, and that's the, then that becomes who you are. That becomes the person that you are, you know, and it's a little change. It doesn't have to be a fad diet. It doesn't have to be, you know, it's, it's those, those, ch- I mean, that's not a, it's not a fad diet to get rid of your bagel and cream cheese and work out in the morning and have an egg, you know, instead of, you know, substituting. And you can find those little changes everywhere. Drinking water. Like if you were drinking soda, if you were like grabbing a can of Coke three times a day out of the machine and now you're getting water. I mean, it's a a huge change. The sugar levels, the calories, all that stuff. Um, And I think for a lot of people, you know, you sit there and and I do it all the time because I gain weight. I I lose, I gain, I lose, I gain. And uh, and then I analyze when I, you know, I, I stop a moment when I'm in that gain mode. I stop and I go, what am I doing to myself? And there's always an explanation. I'm I'm having a few more beers at night or um you know and it and there's always an explanation there and there's always some little changes that you know hey you might you might not be willing to make those changes but they're there for you if you can and as a coach I'm sure um I mean I you know I'm I'm a I'm I'm a like a running triathlon coach but you have all these other nutrition and and and, and life coaching things that that all goes into that and um is that the kind of thing that you do on a day, like sort of on a daily basis with clients? Is that like sit down and analyze sort of like their habits and where they can make changes? Yeah. And the big thing is we can't have just one measuring stick. Yep. So like the, the scale alone is not a good measuring stick because the scale can go up. It can go down. It can stay the same. I've lost 200 pounds. I've had, a period of time where the scale didn't move for six months. Yeah. That is the most demeaning thing in the world. Yeah. When you can be working as hard as you think you are and that scale isn't moving, but it was in the middle of a marathon training period. Of course that scale ain't going anywhere. Yeah. But my body composition was going crazy. 
I dropped five clothing sizes during marathon training. That's great. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where it, it's almost tit for tat because I had to put the scale away other than, you know, using it for like sweat analysis in, in those little things, but, you know, really using then, you know, what, what other standards of measurement, what other benchmarks can I look at for change? How do I feel? Is my, is the food that I'm consuming serving me well? Do, do I feel heavy after I eat? You know, do, do I feel icky after, you know, a greasy meal or, you know, do I, you know, like there, depending on, you know, the, the beer I drink. Some mornings I'll, I'll wake up with a stomach ache. Some days I'll wake up with, you know, rearing and ready to go. And then I'll be like, hey, maybe that's not the drink I should be having right. at happy hour. Right. Oh, I know so, that. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it, 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 you know, sometimes it even just comes down to brand. <laughs> so it, it, it's really honing in on on the, the, the habits. And, you know, is what I'm putting in my body serving me well does this make me feel good does it not it, looking at you know the the inches the measurements you know just you know the the people we're surrounding with are they building us up or are they they feeding you know toxic energy into us you know is, is the con you know so that's so true social media right now yeah Oh, oh God. my gosh, you know, yep. we are getting drug into so many conversations. You know, are we limiting how much garbage we're bringing in right now? Yes, we need to be informed. We need to be getting our news. But are we dragging ourselves down in it? Because it all plays in yeah. to our ultimate success. Yeah, you know, I, and the way I like to put it sometimes is uh, there's, all you know, sometimes Sometimes you have a bad run or you have a bad day and, and there's usually you can kind of look back and kind of analyze it. Hey, maybe I had a really good day yesterday, a really hard day yesterday and I'm just run down. Maybe I drank too much last night. Maybe I ate the wrong thing. Maybe I ate the wrong at the wrong time. Maybe I'm not fueled enough. Uh, maybe I just ate right before the workout and it's still sitting in my belly. Um, but, you know, especially when it comes to weekends, I mean, it's so easy to get entrapped in like that, hey, go out and have a drink or go out and, and stay out late or go out, whatever the pressures are that you have on you, that social pressure, um, which is why I always kind of like if, if that, if that coach or, you know, the athletes that I coach, if they, if they're kind of going down that path where it's trouble, 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 uh, you know, you got to like just have a successful moment, you know, and I think the way I put it, just set yourself up to succeed and whether it be shorten up your run distance uh, cause you've been running too much and running too far and just, and, and you're just kind of seeing the same results over and over and over again, uh, shorten it up to see, Hey, you know, Hey, I, I could run a 5k before at 30 minutes and now I'm running at 28. It's like, but I've been running six miles every day. So there, I, there's no way I would know that there, you know what I mean? There's no, so, you know, and, and, and to do things the right way, set yourself up for success, set yourself up to, ha to feel good about it if you're not feeling good and to analyze the things, like you said, like, uh, like any of the, the sort of like that bad behavior or, or things that might have neg negatively affected you. Uh, you know, I, I did to my wife, we, we test ourselves in the mile run. And so for my wife, she did, a, she did a mile run, then she trained for about two months and then we were going to test her again. And I, as a new coach, I tested her the day after her long run, which was a big mistake. And I knew it was a mistake, but I'm like, ah, you know, she doesn't have time. Let's just squeeze this in here. She'll get it done. She got it done. And she was like two seconds slower than her initial run. And I'm like, you know, that's my own fault. And that's, you know, I'll never do that again because, you know, it's very easy to see that and know all you, you did all that work and then think, oh my God, I'm doing all this work for nothing. So you got to kind of set yourself up for success and it kind of, it all that, that goes throughout your, you know, your nutrition, your, you know, your sleep at night, your sleep habits, things like that. All these things that can go into whether or not you're, you're successful in this sport or not. And I, I don't know. I just, I think, uh, there's a lot, there's definitely a lot to that. Um, the other note that I wrote down, uh, was cause I, I found it interesting when you talked about how you walk to the end of the 
you went to the end of the block and then you did it twice and then you started walking more and you were getting a little faster and then you started running. And the funny thing is, is that as a coach and, and you'll probably see this too, is like the, the formula, if you're slow or if you're faster, if you're starting, if it's always the same, you know, it's always the same. I mean, no, you're not going to tell like a newbie to do like a 40 minute tempo run. That would be insane, but uh, it's just, Work on the small stuff and then build to the bigger, you know, it just takes time and dedication and effort to do that. And, you know, I think about the, and I, I was there too. I mean, I was 280 pounds and, uh, not doing anything with myself and thinking that there was nothing available to me. I'm not a good runner. I'm not a good, but then you just all of a sudden one day you make that choice and then it sticks and you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And then, you know, you're finishing marathons. Um, so I, you know, I think, and I don't know, I just, I feel, I sense this message coming from you to people where you were uh, when you just started and that it's so hard to take that first step and, and to get out there and do it. And, and, and then once you do, look at you now. You know, one, one of the best pieces of advice that I, I've, I've gotten and it, it comes from my business coach of all people is just get your party started <laughs> and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do something. Yeah. And I, I love that. You know, I, I had one of my clients this morning. She didn't feel well and she she has a habit of that all or nothing that you know it, it wasn't like illness like i need to be in bed right it was, it was just one of those yeah malaise kind of run down so you know it, it, it it's one of those she just needs that reminder that just do something you don't don't go at the at the workout full throttle, but just do something. Start start at this point and see how it feels. Yeah. And, and if it feels okay, then progress to this point. And if it feels okay, then progress to this point. But don't just say, "No, nah, I'm not feeling it, so I'm just not doing it." Because then we just, we don't get anywhere. Yeah. And you know, like sometimes it's, it just, it's e as easy as just putting your sneakers on. Right. You know, it's just like, all right, I don't feel like getting out of bed. All right. Let me just, you know, some days I get out of bed and literally like it's the, it's, if I reach for, you know, if I reach for my gym shorts or like just dress shorts or whatever, you know, if I, if I know I need to get a workout in and eventually but I kind of know mentally that I'm not, I'm not completely sold out, sold, you know, bought into that concept of working out that day. Well, let's put the gym shorts on, even though it's kind of pain in the butt that I got to carry my keys and my wallet and everything in these loose pockets as opposed to wearing, you know. Uh, but I know that if I put the gym shorts on, it just removes a little excuse of, hey, I'm not ready to run. So I don't want to, you know, I, I, you know, I don't have my gym shorts on, so I can't run. Uh, that removes an excuse. It's a small excuse. But it could be as little as that as it takes to get out the door. Exactly. And it, it, it's those tiny actions, but they become so powerful. I agree. No, I totally agree. I just, it's, yeah, it's those little tiny things that, you know, uh, oh, I got to go upstairs and get my sneakers. Well, if you have them downstairs, they're there. You don't have that excuse. It's just, you know, just little things that you can make, little changes you can make to just bend the odds ever so slightly in your favor for success. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, that's a great message that you have. Um, anyway, uh, so is your next race or your next scheduled race, Ironman, Arizona, 70.3? No, it's a super have, frog one. Or? Um, I have super frog 70.3 in September. Yeah. Hopefully. And then I have Ironman, Arizona in November. Gotcha. Maybe you'll get one of those too. I, I, you know, just cross your fingers for one of the, and how, how has training gone so far? Training is going okay. Um, you know, pools were, were a little, mm. little slow 
allowed open. So, but the, you know, the beautiful thing is like, I have a lake here. So, um, you know, sw- swim training was a little slow and I am not the greatest. <laughs> I'm not the fastest swimmer. Yeah. So, H- have you done a lot of open uh, water swimming before or? Um, you know, I, I'm a good pool swimmer. I'm yeah. not the best open water mm. swimmer. So, well, it's good uh, to force you in the lake then. They just, yes. maybe that's, maybe that was the hidden benefit there for you. Yeah. My, uh, you know, I've done Oceanside, but um, my understanding with Super Frog is the surf is a little bit more intense than Oceanside. So um, I, I think I'm going to have to hit the lake um, with somebody that's got a jet ski or, or a boat to give me a little more <laughs> Get you a little wave. So, yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, that, that's, that's intimidating. That's no, that's intimidating. I tell you, they offered me, I was in, I was registered for Ironman Muscleman. It's in New York, in New York. It's a lake swim. And then they, they got, they got postponed or canceled till next year. And, and they gave me all these options to transfer. But I got to tell you, I cross off ocean swims. If it's in the ocean, I, I did, I did one, I did Ironman Maryland and that was in saltwater in a river, but it was sort of a choppy river. Mm-hmm. and not much visibility and i just said to myself you know what if i'm going to spend all this money doing this stuff i'm going to start doing i'm just doing races in 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 water that i can handle and enjoy and not you know the salt water was was annoying you can't really i mean unless you live near an ocean you know you're not going to train in salt water um well, you know i i really in o- ocean side is just kind of a special race for me and yeah. i really enjoyed Oceanside a lot. And I'm, I'm going back in 2021 because, you know, they, they gave that option. Right. And, and I was really grateful that there, there were a lot of groups that offered swim clinics when mm-hmm. I went the first time. Um, cause I had never done ocean swimming before. So I went a few days before, got some great tips on getting through the surf. Cause once you're past the surf, it's fabulous. It's same, I mean, yeah. it was a wonderful experience. I, I would tell anybody go to ocean. Swimming. All right. See, 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 I went to see my friends do Ironman Maine, which was an ocean swim. And I, I watched as they went out and then the current was going one direction. So when they went out, it was like. Uh, they were going kind of at an angle and the current was in their face. And then when they came back, they were going, going with the current. So it was easier. Uh, but watching them try to swim uh, through the surf with the current, I was like, man, <laughs> X cross that off my list. <laughs> it, it's definitely yeah. a skill to learn. <laughs> but also, you know, at the lakes, like in, I did Lake Placid, I did Montreblanc and the lakes are, were so pristine and you could practically drink the water. You could see every, you know, you could see pretty, you know, the distance you can see is pretty good. Uh, and for me, I mean, I don't know, I guess if, if there was a nice flat bike course with no wind, that might be the more, the biggest benefit. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, those, you know, the hillies, the hilly ones are so intimidating, but, uh, second to that, I think, I think the, the water just enjoying the water. But if you, you know, if you're saying that you enjoyed the ocean, um, I told, I, I said, you know what I said? I got out of the water in Maryland. I said, the next time, I, the next time I do an Ironman in salt water is going to be Kona. And that's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> there you go. But, um, so listen, I, uh, where can we, where, before I let you go here, where can we, uh, where can we find you? Where can we contact you? Where can, you know, is there social media, uh, places that we can, we can look for you? Yes, I am on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash heart and soul, S-O-L-E. Oh, I see uh, what you did there. Yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, and um, heart and soul fitness. And um, then I am on uh my website is stephanieunderconstruction.com. All right. And uh, I am on Instagram at – my Instagram handle is really long because there are a <laughs> lot of people that liked it. It is heart and soul fitness and wellness. <laughs> wow. There you go. Who knew that they let you do that many characters? I know. I was really <laughs> surprised. It was really hard to, to, to fit that one in. But. Yeah. Twitter got me. You know what? Twitter got me by one letter when I did Ordinary Marathoner. There, it, it chopped off the R. Uh, so I wound up doing ORD Marathoner. Now I got to try to explain that because Ord Marathoner sounds really dumb. 
<laughs> you do, you, oh, oh yes, my Twitter one is is yeah. is quite odd. Twitter is H S Fitness Luaris. All right. Yeah. I think I've seen you on there. I've seen you on there. I'm still learning Twitter a little bit. Uh, So yeah, you know what? That's a new platform for me. That's so me, you know, I'm on Twitter all the time, but I can't, you know, I actually have my wife doing my Instagram. She doesn't really do it that often. She doesn't really update it that often. I just, I never kind of attach it. I'm like, I got so, I got Facebook, I got Twitter and I'm social media out. Uh, So I, I can't handle more than two at once. I think, I don't know. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> so listen, I wish you the best of luck in training. Thank you. Wish you the best of luck in your races. Hopefully I'm crossing my fingers. I, you know what? I'm going to, here's what I'm not going to be greedy. I'm crossing my fingers. You get one of the two. There we go. There, and I, I, I think I'm that's all right. We'll try not to be greedy and hopefully we'll get at least one of two for you uh, this year. And this would be your first 70.3, right? Um, the first one that I'll complete. Okay. Okay. Yes. Let's but, go in that with. I like the confidence. Yes. Yeah. I've 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 had a couple DNFs in my life, but you know, let's you know, briefly I, let's touch on that quickly because I think it's important. Yeah. I think that's important because I think I feel like a lot of people, and I know you're like, oh yeah, I get to go, and I know he's reeling me back in. Uh, a lot of people are intimidated to enter races sometimes because they don't want to DNF. The shame of DNFing is something that is very real to some people. Mm-hmm. I am not ashamed to DNF. <laughs> you apparently are not ashamed to DNF. Uh, you know, I, it's not that I feel good about it when it happens. Um, There's always disappointment, but I've never like. It's like I just feel like who cares? Uh, you know, if I train, if I undertrained, if I was went into a race undertrained, uh, I would rather start it and not finish it um, than you know. Than just not start at all, you know, not start at all. I think that's more being sort of a you know quitting attitude. At least you tried. You could see if you can finish. I, I've DNF two big races, and in both 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 times, I'm like, and one of them I was undertrained. One of them I was I felt like I was going to do well, and I just did poorly. Um, but there's no shame in the DNF. Like the you know, it's at least you're up. You know, you're up. You're moving. You're going at it. I mean, have you run into people? that have, have expressed that contention? Um, you know, there, there are so many opinions when it comes to DNF and there's yeah. a lot of people that make assumptions yeah. about it. Yeah. You know, when you come back and they're like, Oh, well you probably were under trained. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, you can, <laughs> you, know, all the assumptions you, want. <laughs> you know, because I know, the effort I put in, yeah, I know the work that I put in, and in the instances that I didn't finish races, uh, like for Oceanside last year, um, I was pulled because of time, but I was pulled because of time because I had valley fever, you That's- know. I, I I was trained and ready to race, yeah, but and I then, was sick. Yeah. So well, you st- I mean, I, it's you know, I, just to I, get I in. was I was not upset at all. I I went out there and raced with what I had yeah. in the tank. Yeah. And, you know, I I've had a few other century races that you know it was just you know it it was I was trained. I was ready, but it was a matter of fueling that right. knocked me off. I would get to 60, 70 miles and it was still in a place where I was learning my body and how, how to go the distance. And I, I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't balance it and my body wasn't going to go. Yeah. And I've been there. I've been, you know, I've been on rides where I've been on like 60 mile rides and, and the last two minutes to the two miles to get to the car were just so, I, I couldn't, I could, my back hurt, everything hurt. And it, you know, it's fueling issues that it just, you know, it's sometimes it's, I think sometimes mentally our brains tell us, you know, it takes a lot of work to get from zero to 50 miles and then not as much work to go from 50 to 100, which might be a little bit true. Um, but it's double the distance, <laughs> you know, it's du- it takes a long time. Um, 
But anyway, back to back to the uh, the DNF thing. I just uh, I just I hear some people, so you know, they oh, I was going to DNF, and I just I didn't know what to tell people. I didn't know how I was going to tell people that I DNF'd when they, you know, especially a lot of people raise money for charity and things like that, and they feel like they've disappointed people. Um, and I think that that is intimidating to people in this sport. Uh, but I say embrace the DNF. It's all an experience. Uh, it's something to learn from. You know, you don't like to have a bad day when you're going out on a race when you've trained hard. And, but sometimes, like you said, if you get if you're sick that morning, circumstances dictate that things are different on race day for whatever it could be. Uh, and it could be something you did. It might just be it's just not your day. And uh, and I don't, you know, I don't know. I just I would just rather see a DNF someone DNF and just be honest about it and open about it. And, you know, even people that cheat and like cut the course, don't cut the course. Just DNF. No. Just the, or, you know, or, yeah, you got to get back home. So you might have to cut the course, but don't cross the finish line and, and take your medal. Just take your DNF. It's not embarrassing. It's not, um, nope. it's just part of the building process. Yep. And I, I have never at a, a course where I have DNF not been met with anything but love and support. Yeah. I, right. I mean, people get it. Yep. People get it. Some days it's just not your day. So, um, yeah, no, I, I'm with you there. I, I, now I'm going through my DNFs in my mind. Although I'm, I, I DNF'd an Ironman after one loop on the bike, and I started. I was walking back to my hotel, and my daughter saw me, and she's like, "Wow, Dad, you finished!" And I didn't even see it. I'm like, "Yeah, if I would have finished, I would have came in first. <laughs> no, I didn't finish. Yeah, Dad is finished. Maybe that's <laughs> that is finished for the day." Um, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. Uh, anyway, again, I wish you good luck, Stephanie. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate your time. Um, you can, you know, Stephanie, uh, put out her social media stuff. You can, you guys can reach her there. We'll also put the links to her stuff, uh, in the, con- in the, uh, the comment section on, on, uh, not the comment, in the summary section on the YouTube video and on our website as well. So Stephanie, thanks again for coming on. Thank you. And always remember, uh, <laughs> I forget, forget my tagline. I have to have this tagline. I, uh, <laughs> Every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it, guys. <laughs> <laughs>